it's time for our second look at the Dogs of War. Today we'll be looking at the Armager Helverins. Hello and welcome back to Allspets Tactics, the strategy and gameplay focused 40k channel. This week we've been going through the Imperial Knight Codex, stratagem by stratagem and datasheet by datasheet, trying to get the most out of each of these units on the tabletop. If either Space Marine or Imperial Knight videos interest you in the future, then please consider subscribing, because I'll be keeping the videos coming. Now the Armager Helverins are the ranged version of the Armager class mini knights with their brutal twin auto cannons. In this video we'll take a look at their rules, any buffs that we can give them via warlord traits, relics and stratagems and the like, and how I would go about running these mechs on the tabletop. In the background they're deployed as a fast moving support element for the knight households, able to run rings round the foe while putting down a withering hail of auto cannon fire to shred infantry and light vehicles. Armagers are typically bonded to a larger, more significant knight, and the desires and actions of their bondsmen are manipulated via an interesting neural network, so they're very much a lower class of knight compared with the big Questorus or Dominus ones. This slightly less glamorous support and manoeuvre role is well reflected in their rules, so let's take a look at those now. The Armager Helverins are as always a Lord of War choice for Codex Imperial Knights, and same as the Warglaves we talked about last week, you can buy between 1 and 3 of them as a single Lord of War choice. If you don't include any Questorus or Dominus pattern knights in the detachment, then you don't get any CP for the Lord of War detachment, so you can't just field an army of only Armagers and get CP for it. They cost 172 points per model, and that gets you the Armager Auto Cannons, which they're equipped of 2 of, and a Heavy Stubber as a Carapace mounted weapon. They have the exact same profile as the Warglaves, a blisteringly quick movement of 14, weapon skill and blistic skill 3 up, strength 6, toughness 7, 12 wounds, 4 attacks, leadership 8 and a 3 up save. And they also have their 5 plus invulnerable save from their ion shield. They get bracketed when they go down to 6 wounds or less, where their movement drops to 10 and their blistic skill to 4 up, and when they're on 3 or less, their movement drops to 7 and their blistic skill becomes 5 plus. So overall they have the stat line of a very fast battle tank that can still hit on threes in melee should they happen to wind up there. Auto their signature weapon is their armager autocannons, their 60 inch range, heavy 2d3 weapons with a strength of 7, AP minus 1 and a flat damage of 3. They ignore the penalty for moving and shooting these weapons, so you can be running around at 14 inches per turn shooting these off with no ballistic skill modifiers. As they have two of them, on average they'll be putting out about 8 autocannon shots per turn, which if you fire it at, say, a Rhino type vehicle with a toughness of 7, will equate to round about 4 damage per turn out of those autocannons. Their only option is whether to swap out that carapace mounted heavy stubber for a multigun, which I don't recommend doing. You don't want these guys anywhere near the enemy, because unlike the regular Imperial Knights, these cannot fall back and shoot, so if your enemy touches them even with, say, a Gretchen squad or a guard infantry squad, they're not going to be firing those auto cannons next turn, and if they're not firing those auto cannons, then they're a complete waste of a unit really, as their melee profile is pretty underwhelming. They have a couple of special rules, they have the Ion Shield for the 5 plus invul save, they explode when they die, on the roll of a 6 each unit within 6 inches takes d3 mortal wounds, and they have the Vehicle Squadron special rule, which means if you do take, say, three of them as one Lord of War choice, you put them down all within six inches of each other at the start of the game, and from there they're all individual units. So overall, the Armager Helverin is a very fast-moving gunboat that can fly around the backfield at breakneck speed, wants to be nowhere near the enemy if possible, and has decent long-ranged firepower with a surprisingly high damage characteristic that is best suited for targeting things with high toughness and low armor save, say for example, Dark Eldar Venoms or Dark Eldar Talos for example. Now let's look at a few ways that we can boost their abilities on the battlefield, starting with knightly houses. First off, you want to ignore anything that gives you only a buff to close combat, so we'll talk about the other bonuses if you're fielding armages en masse. House Hawk Shroud can keep them accurate even when they degrade, which means that they'll have to be 3 wounds or less before they hit on anything worse than a 3 up. House Raven can get them even more speed because they'll be able to advance and still shoot all of their weapons. House Tyrannus can give them a 6 up feel no pain save, and a 20% on average increase in their durability is pretty nice. And House Volker will let them reroll ones against a target provided it is the closest target. 
if you're solely looking to pick a house to run a lot of armager helverins, I would personally go with Tyrannus. They're so fast that they don't really need the extra house raven advance move all that much, and they're quite likely not to be targeting the thing that's closest to them to activate those house Volker reroll ones. You need to keep these guys away from the enemy, so that bonus is quite likely to be negated if the enemy has any screening units that your armager isn't necessarily going to want to shoot. One option when fielding a lot of armager helverins is to take the knight preceptor, which will give them reroll ones while they're within 6 inches of this model. Now that equates to about a 17% increase in their damage output, which is certainly not bad. The main problem with the Knight Preceptor buffing the Armagers is that the Knight Preceptor's war gear is all close range orientated, so you're not going to get much value out of him at all by sitting around and buffing a lot of other smaller war mechs. If he was less expensive, this wouldn't be a problem, but as he does cost quite a lot of points, you really can't afford to have that much of your army just sitting around giving reroll ones to Armager Helverins. If you were running a Knight Preceptor to buff Armagers, I would probably include some Warglaives to go on the front line along with him, and maybe trail a Helverin or two behind the Preceptor, so the Warglaives can get in and deal with any incoming close combat threats, and the Helverins can stay right at the back, just within that 6 inch bubble to reroll ones, and minimise their chance of being charged in close combat. As we discussed in the Armager Warglaive video, the Helm Dominus also exists to help buff Armager models. You give this to a Questorus Pattern Knight, or a Dominus, and you can nominate one enemy unit within 24 inches per turn, and all of the armages within 6 inches of this model add plus 1 to their hit rolls for attacks made against that enemy unit. So this coupled with the Knight Preceptor's reroll ones could actually be genuinely quite a buff to the Warglaives. Again, this does kind of suck a bit that it has to be quite so close range, as, as I keep stressing. Armager Helfrins can also afford to be tagged in close combat by enemy models, otherwise they'll not make their points back in any form. There are a few stratagems that we can use to buff up the Armager Helverins. First up is the Sky Reaper Protocols. This costs one command point, it allows you to reroll hits against fly keyword models. We mentioned this in the stratagems video that I posted yesterday, and how it's not actually that big a damage buff compared with what it sounds. If the enemy has negative to hit modifiers, such as most actual flyers will have, you can't reroll the threes or maybe fours that are failed hits, as rerolls happen before modifiers, unfortunately. This will, on average, add a 33% bonus to your damage output, which isn't awful, but considering you're only, on average, doing about four wounds to a rhino with those auto cannons each turn, then it's only about one to two wounds extra, so it's up to you to decide whether that's worth a command point or not. We also have rotate ion shields which shouldn't be forgotten on armagers, even though it is generally more useful to use it on the Questorus Pattern Knights. Machine Spirit Resurgent is another useful stratagem if you're playing Mechanicus. Being able to hit on threes even when you're at your lowest damage profile is actually a very big buff to your firepower, and is definitely worth considering. But overall, I would remember that if you're using stratagems on your armagers, they're likely to be a lot less efficient than if you could be using them on a full Questorus Pattern Knight as bigger models get bigger benefits from the same rules, generally speaking at least. So let's get on to how I would field Armature Helverins on the battlefield. Firstly, take the Heavy Stubber over the Meltigon, no questions asked. The long range synergizes well with the auto cannons and should give you just a little few extra anti-infantry shots for very cheap, compared with paying for an expensive Meltigon that might tempt you to put the Armager Helverin within charge range of enemy models. When you're deploying them on the battlefield, you can definitely factor in their very long movement into your deployment. They don't necessarily have to set up somewhere where they can shoot the enemy turn 1, they can just set up somewhere where they'll be safe, and then they can move to shoot the enemy turn 1. 14 inch movement is frankly enormous, and should let them draw a bead on most targets from most places in the battlefield. If you are playing an absolute ton of armagers, or you're playing armagers alongside an allied army, then I'd consider the prepared position stratagem. It doesn't affect titanic models, so it won't affect your biggest knights, but having armagers with a 2-up save turn 1 could be quite a nice durability buff if you do happen to be going second. When you're actually playing the game, there really is just one thing you need to remember with armagers. I've mentioned this a few times already, but I'll say it again. On no circumstances, let your enemy get a charge on the armager helverins if you can prevent it. I'll admit that I don't often use them in battle but I've played an absolute ton of knight players at tournaments who use the armager helverins when I'm using my own knights. I'm not sure what it is about these guys that makes players want to move them up 
the board towards my army, but I'd say in almost every game that I've faced Armager Helverns, I've wound up charging them with a few of my allied guard, and from then they never get to shoot for the rest of the game. A guard infantry squad can quite happily fully wrap around an Armager Helverin, so it won't even be able to fall back next turn to be able to shoot. They've got an absolutely enormous range, unless they're a key model that you absolutely need to claim an objective for a turn, they should be skulking as far back as you possibly can. Ideally screened by any of your own allies that you're bringing to be not chargeable from reserve. Also, unless it's an absolutely game deciding moment, then on no accounts charge the Armager Helverin into combat. Sure, you might kill an extra couple of guardsmen or two, but you need to consider the fact that you're losing all of the Armager's firepower for next turn unless you actually manage to wipe out the squad in close combat. Again, for some reason I've had multiple players charge Armager Helverins into my guardsmen, and I've been slightly confused as to why they do this. I'd advise you to just stay back, and remember that your auto cannons will be worth far more than doing a few extra strength 6 hits this turn. If you do find yourself in close combat, try and fall back immediately. Even if you just force your opponent to eat another round of Armager Helverin Overwatch, then that's generally going to be better than trying to step on a few extra infantry models in your own turn. Now I've finished going off on one about Armager Helverins and close combat, other things that you should bear in mind are that they're a relatively small knight, so if you are playing a pure knight's army for example, they're quite a good unit for scoring backfield objectives. They don't really have any incentive to be moving unless they need to move out of the way of enemy models, so they can sit back and do the grunt work while your bigger knights go off to charge the enemy and get all the glory. Their guns are quite interesting, they have, they have a very high potential damage output, but a fairly normal average damage output. If you get lucky, make a bunch of hits, and your opponent fails a bunch of saves, then each of those damage 3 shots is really, really going to leave a mark. One slight weakness with these high damage, low AP guns is that it's a really good target for your opponent to use a command reroll on it, particularly if they're saving on a 3-up or a 2-up for whatever reason. But then, if you do force your opponent to burn a command point, then that's not such a bad state of affairs, even if it means not getting the damage through this turn. So, in a short summary, keep them as far away from the enemy as you can. Ideally, aim those auto cannons on anything that they're wounding on a 4-up or better. Use their long movement to stay out of range of enemy units and potentially score objectives. Screen them well from enemy infantry coming in from reserves or moving up the table. And try and avoid close combat if at all possible, unless it's absolutely game-winning or you're 100% certain you will take out the enemy unit with your charge which statistically amounts to about one or two guardsmen at the very most. Overall, I think the Armager Helverins are a moderately competitive unit. I'm not certain that they're the absolute all-stars of the Imperial Knight Codex. I think that the current strongest things at the moment are the Questorus Pattern Knights, particularly Crusaders. But they are a decently pointed, fast, mobile, damage-dealing unit, and that ticks a lot of important boxes in Warhammer 40k. I think their main issue is that they don't stack up amazingly in terms of firepower to durability versus, say, a Lehman Rust tank commander for the Imperial Guard. So in a lot of competitive lists, you'll be seeing big knights and tank commanders as opposed to big knights and armagers. They're fairly similar in durability. 12 wounds for the 5 plus invulnerable save for the armagers versus 12 wounds and toughness 8 for the tank commanders, but the tank commanders just do a ton more damage. If you have no interest in running guard or other allies though, then armagers are perfectly serviceable for their job. You'll rarely be overwhelmed by how much damage they do, but they will reliably just carve off a wound or two from enemy vehicles. So thank you very much for listening to another Auspex Tactics video. If I've got any rules wrong, or you have any other opinions on how to field these boys on the battlefield, then please let me know. I think tomorrow we'll be looking at some more Imperial Knight stratagems, and talking about some Terminators as well. So looking forward to that. Feel free to subscribe if you'd like to see more, and feel free to support me on Patreon if these videos are useful to you. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.